All right, cool. Welcome, everybody. Uh, excited to be here with you today. Um, you know, this is uh, something that we've been working on for a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So today, you know, I've been leading up to this for several days, and I've got a great presentation for you. And quite frankly, I mean, we have a really awesome opportunity to talk to you about. And here's the thing. Everybody knows me as a real estate guy, you know, uh, buying and flipping houses, doing notes. You know, I bought and sold several hundreds of properties over the last five years. Um, but I'm not just real estate and never wanted to be just real estate. And I've wanted to find other opportunities to make money with my money. And I don't know if you can relate to this, but I think the biggest curse and sort of bless and Chris, you can probably relate to this. The biggest curse and blessing as an entrepreneur is that you can't shut your mind off from working and thinking of how to actually build something. So it goes both ways. Sometimes it keeps you up all night and sometimes it's just like the greatest thing ever. But what we're going to share with you today, um, I've actually been working on for the last year since COVID started. I knew that auctions were slowing down uh, and then that was just capitalized with moratoriums on foreclosures, on tax sales. And so I thought it would be a good time to really kind of try and figure out this whole e-commerce thing. Uh, I know there's a play there and I spent actually a couple of months, the first part of the year, trying to figure out, like, figure it out. And finally, I knew it, it wasn't going fast enough with me just trying to learn it myself. And I had to come to come to the terms that I don't need to be the master of the universe. <laughs> and, right. and it was time to find the top people that I could align with. And one of my mentors has been telling me for the past couple of years to focus on the who to actually do the how. And I was finally the student was finally prepared to listen. So um, as I started building out an e-commerce store on, uh, I can't think of the name of that platform, Shopify, I was doing some Shopify stuff and it got me banned from Facebook ads and all this, and it was a mess. So I, what I did was I started researching people in the space and the man I'm gonna introduce you today, I think I have a real synergy with, and more importantly, I respect his business acumen and abilities, but also because I know he's worked with people that I know, like, and trust. And they've all told me he comes from a real place of integrity. And I've begun to witness it firsthand, which is the reason why I'm bringing him to you today. Um, so before I bring him on, let me introduce you to Chris, because he's done some pretty awesome things for being such a, a young, young man. It makes me feel old to be able to say young man. So <laughs> <laughs> even though he's not that much younger than me, but nonetheless, yeah. Chris has built several high level companies, including a big telemarketing company that recorded like 20 million in sales before he exited. He runs a large wholesaling business. So he's a real estate guy too. And, you know, we all love real estate. And he also runs a social media company that helps people grow their following and, and build a brand. And so uh, he's into rental properties, apartment buildings as well. And as well as this great e-commerce business that he's going to be uh, walking you through today. So, Chris, good afternoon, and thanks for taking some time to speak with our network on this opportunity. I'm going to turn the floor over to you, and I'll hop in with some questions and color along the way. Awesome, awesome. And uh, for everybody that's on, I promise you guys, this is going to be lightning speed. It's not a big, long presentation. We'll be in and out within 20 minutes. If you're wondering why I'm here trapped in my bedroom, it's because my baby and my oldest daughter both have COVID. So I'm just sitting here like going crazy in the room, but I'm glad to be able to do something for 20 minutes and <laughs> start working with you guys. So uh, before I dive into this presentation, obviously, you know, we're here to talk about Amazon automation, but if it's okay with you guys, I'll just take like a one minute and just tell you a little bit about me in case you aren't familiar with me. Let me make sure this thing's working. Uh, and you get to put me back in control. No, you're good. Oh, it's just a delay. There's like a lag. Oh, okay. Anyways, there we go. So that's me, Chris Gomez. That's me and my wife and my two kids. Yes, I got a baby and a 20-year-old. <laughs> Don't ask me how that happened, but it did. It's great. I got a built-in babysitter. So uh, <laughs> that's me. I'm on Instagram as Chris the Shark. So if any of you guys are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, you can check me out there. I'm real big on social media. It's the best way to connect with me uh, to this day. Even with 700,000 followers, I do my best to keep up with messages daily. So that's kind of what I do all day long. But enough about me. We'll just jump right into this opportunity, okay? So who is this for? This is for investors that want a done-for-you business, meaning that 
you know, you put up the capital and someone runs it for you. It's no different than like buying a, a franchise. I always tell our clients, like, it'd be like if you bought a Starbucks and you have nothing to do with it and someone runs it for you and you make money. It's the same thing we do with Amazon, but it's a digital franchise. This is for investors that are looking specifically to get monthly cash flow. That's what these businesses do. They just crank out cash. Um, so I'm sure by now you guys have heard of drop shipping. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Maybe some of you aren't. Um, I'll kind of give you a, a bird's eye view of how this works and exactly what we do and how we leverage Amazon's platform to make money. We put together this little graph that literally just explains it in the most simplest way. So if you start on the top box where it says customer buys TV from Amazon for $150, what most people don't realize is that when they go buy something from Amazon, nine out of 10 times, Amazon's just taking their money, paying somebody else, and then someone else is doing the fulfillment. Um, I know a lot of you guys on this call are real estate guys, as am I. I was actually just, just last week, I was on stage in Texas speaking about this in front of a thousand real estate people at this huge event. And I was telling them it's, it's no different than wholesaling. If you're familiar with wholesaling, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you find a discounted property, you find the end buyer, you put the two together and you make a spread. And we do the same thing with Amazon, but it, it just starts backwards with Amazon. It starts with the buyer first. So if someone comes on, buys a TV for 150 bucks. We go get the TV from Walmart for hundred dollars. Walmart ships the TV directly to the customer. There's a $50 spread there. Out of that $50 spread, Amazon takes a cut for using their platform. And then us and you as the investor split up the difference. And uh, we'll get to that later about you know, how the split works and how much we charge and all that type of stuff. But this is, in my opinion, I mean, it's, I always tell people this is the best business model I've ever seen. And uh, like Ben mentioned earlier, I had a telemarketing company. Um, I was doing that since 2007. We grew that company to $20 million. At my heyday, we had over 250 employees. I know what it takes to run a brick and mortar business to do a lot of volume. And it's not easy. <laughs> this business model is so simple. It's just like, even to this day, I'm still blown away by it. So what I did was I put this little slide together for you guys. Um, we, we have a saying, we say, you know, brick and mortar versus click and order. Like nowadays we're in the click and order world. I'm 36 years old. I grew up in the brick and mortar world. You know, when, when I grew up, it was, if you want a business, you got to buy a company and get a location and do all these things. And I mean, still holds true to this day. I mean, we still have an office and stuff, but these digital franchises, I've just never seen anything like it. And I want to show you guys this comparison. So let me pull this stuff up real quick. Okay. So if you look over to the left, if we were coming to you saying, Hey, we're going to go start a franchise with you. You're going to be the investor. We're going to run it. Over here to the left, this is all the stuff you, know, you normally need in a conventional business, right? Like you need an office or a warehouse or some type of retail space. What does that involve? You know, a lot of money, big commitments, personal guarantees on leases, that type of thing. Um, you need employees and management, which is the big one. I mentioned to you guys that um, in my heyday, I had around 250 employees, you know, between salespeople and admin and warehouse and in-house collections department and QC, you know, quality control, all these different people. It, it's a lot of work, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work. If you've never ran something like that, it's very difficult. Um, and then, you know, you got utility bills, insurance, workman's comp, that type of thing. Um, another big one is inventory. You know, that's something to where if you were starting any other type of company, if, if we were coming to you guys saying, hey, we're going to go start a McDonald's. Well, we need inventory. We need chicken nuggets, right? If we're going to go start an auto parts store, we need auto parts, right? And inventory, housing it and floating it can be very, very expensive. Um, in my heyday, we were rolling like three, $4 million in receivables at, at all times, which was a nightmare because you always have people owing you money. And then when you finally get it, you got to turn around and buy more inventory and you're like trying to scrape money off the top. It's very difficult. Um, and then another big one is marketing money to, to market your business. If you guys are all real estate guys on here, you know how much money we spend on marketing, right? With mail and PPC and all these things. With the drop shipping business model, none of that's required. I mean, literally none of it, right? So think about it. Like there's no office, no warehouse because Amazon's the platform. You don't need any employees because we are your employees. So my company works for you essentially. You know, I have over a hundred employees now to run this business between what we have here in the States and we have some that are outsourced overseas and we do all the heavy lifting. This is literally a done for you business for you as the investor, okay? There's no utilities, no insurance. The best thing is there's no inventory, right? It's beautiful because on Amazon, we can list whatever we want. So I have a team of people 
that do nothing but monitor Amazon's rankings for their items all day long. And all they do is list and remove items all day long to find out what sells. So there's no housing of inventory. We don't need to uh, take any of your guys' money and go buy inventory to sell. It's actually the other way around. We don't buy anything until someone's already paid for the order through Amazon. So your money's always safe. It's just the best business model I've ever seen. And guys, if you have any questions, just hang tight because when we get to the end of this, like we're going to do a thorough Q&A and go over all this stuff. Okay? I'm, and I'm kind of moving faster. That was like the biggest hurdle I found when I was like trying to, you know, build a business is like, how, to, how the hell do you know which products are going to sell, you know, and which ones had good margin in them? And it, it's like the biggest time suck just researching that stuff. So to have like a whole crack team doing it for you on a daily basis is, is pretty sweet. Oh yeah. And not only that, like, you know, when I was running my telemarketing business, this is what would happen. Okay. We had 5,000 SKUs. So we'd have all this material in stock. Well, one day Salesforce wakes up and decides to get hot selling this widget, right? Boom. Those are out of stock. Now we're chasing down suppliers, trying to get more, you know, drill bits in stock or whatever the item is. And then everything else is becoming dead stock. And it's like a constant balancing act of stacking and housing inventory, tracking inventory and that type of thing. So with Amazon, it's as simple as, hey, this isn't selling, we delete it. <laughs> it's like, we're not, we don't have to go get a refund on material we bought or nothing like that. And Amazon literally puts a ranking on every single item. So we can tell by the ranking how fast the item's selling and at what type of margin. And so we're always blending it with the perfect combination of items that are selling fast at a good margin. So here's a million dollar question, right? Everybody wants to know, like, if I do this, how much money can I make? You don't have to take my word for it, guys. I literally just pulled this right off Google. Like you can Google right now, how much do drop shippers make on Amazon and this will pop up, okay? So a store doing 100,000 a month in sales, you're looking at about 10 to 15,000 a month in profit. Plus you're gonna get reward points on your credit card. These stores are ran with credit. Uh, even if you have cash, you don't wanna use it because it'll be tied up forever. So what happens is we, we link your credit card up to one of these stores. And that card gets ran to fulfill orders. So a side benefit is you get a lot of reward points. Um, but yeah, seven to 10% net monthly profits on all sales. And that's per month. Okay. It's, I know us real estate guys, myself included, we're always thinking per year on everything, right? This is per month. And that's why we tell people that uh, from a strictly cash on cash return perspective, like you just can't beat one of these stores. If you have good credit, and you're able to scale one of these businesses, one store can make you as much money as a bunch of rental properties. And I can tell you guys that I'm a real estate guy too. You know, I'm actually going to uh, Ohio next week to go buy 84 units in Ohio. So I'm still actively investing in real estate too. But to put up some money for one of these stores, they just print cash. It's crazy. You know, if you're if you're the right candidate, right? You, obviously, you have to have the, the credit to run the store, um, and that's a big part of it. So the reason we say seven to ten percent. And it's not like a hard number is because it depends on the amount of credit you have. So a client that has a, a $20,000 limit on their credit card, they're going to make a little bit less than a client that has a $100,000 limit strictly because with the bigger limit, we can actually buy uh, and list more expensive items. So like the bigger items generally have a bigger spread in them. So we're always trying to balance it out to fit your unique situation. Yeah, Chris, I did I actually did the math on that. So I looked at it and said, okay, well, if I had a store that's producing 7,500 a month, it would literally take me 25 properties or notes, depending upon if you're a note investor or, or property investor, to net basically $300 a door, you know, after expenses, if you're, if it's a rental or whatever. So imagine buying a rental for a hundred grand and it producing 7,500 a month. I mean, I, I wish it did. I, I'd buy as many as those as I could, but it just yeah, doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah, we're, we're going to Ohio. We're, you know, this close to picking up 84 units out there, uh, me and Ryan together, right? And, uh, you know, like day one, it's going to net cash flow like 16,000 a month after all the debt service and everything and, you know, counting for CapEx and all that. Yeah. It's like one store can, <laughs> can, can do that. But, <laughs> You know, obviously, like, you know, I still believe, you know, real estate's the way to wealth, right? There's so many yeah. that can own a rental property. But for the average investor, whether you're a real estate guy or not, to be able to just, you know, leverage your credit card, essentially, and park a small amount of cash to buy one of these, you can literally make a lot of money. So if you guys look at these slides right here, these are um, screenshots from the Amazon seller app from clients. 
So the only way you can get these screenshots is from, from the, the customer. So in this scenario, say you guys came on board with us and bought, a, bought one of these stores. Well, you have access to this app. We don't. We have access to the back end on the computer. So we see a different, we don't see this, we see other stuff, right? But point I'm trying to make is we have to get these from clients. So these can't be like Photoshopped or rigged or made up. These are real clients, real results. If you look at some of them, obviously for the sake of this presentation, you know, we tried to put the, uh, the sexier ones, <laughs> all right? <laughs> these, are, these are definitely not new stores. All these stores are uh, over two years old. And some of them are really big. Like, I mean, if you look at this one, 724,000 in 30 days, that's insane, right? That's obviously a high net worth client because you cannot even get that many sales if you don't have a credit line to handle that many sales. So what, what size credit line would you guess that that person has in play? I, if I, I, if I had to guess, I would say he either has like an unlimited Amex or some of our high net worth guys, what they end up doing is they basically get like a, a gigantic business line of credit on an existing business that they already have. And yeah. a lot of times you can get a visa linked to those. So like, I know one of our clients, he has a, a $1.2 million line of credit, but they give him like 600,000 of it on a visa. And then the rest, he can draw from a checking account. So remember with, with these, you know, the way it works is uh, Amazon pays the, the client every two weeks. So essentially, if your store gets cranking, whatever your credit card limit is, we can knock it out, max it out in two weeks and then do it again. So this guy might actually have less than a $700,000 credit line, but it's been used twice in the same 30 day period is probably what happened. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, it's insane. Um, I'm familiar with this client, obviously his store ended up doing like 6 million for the year is a number one guy. If you look over here on, on this side, this client, this is a year to date number 2.7 million. So you guys could just do some quick math, even on the low end, even at 7%. I mean, these guys are making a fortune. Now, disclaimer, you know, that's not typical, right? Typical are clients that are doing more like, you know, 40, 50,000 a month, because most people only have that type of credit available. Uh, here's some more. These are actually some of the ones that are on the last page. I think they're just blown up so you guys can see them better. And it's going to build up over time, right, Chris? Like, in other words, like if you're paying your credit card off because Amazon's paying you every, it's every two weeks once it gets rolling. So, yeah. you know, it's, you know, they're going to, uh, whoever is handling your credit is going to see like you're just constantly changing yeah. that money over and over and over again. These stores have a tendency to uh, explode after a few years. I mean, like you could look right here, like, Last year, this one's up 528%. So this guy was, this store, if I had to guess, it's probably in year two. And it's probably a client that has obviously $200,000 in credit. So year one is usually the slow year. And we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the, the ramp up and how it all works. But by the time you get to year two, if the store is doing well and there's no bad reviews and all the metrics line up and you have the credit combined, they just start going boom, 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 boom. And, they, and eventually they, they usually cap off at some level due to the client's credit, right? Um, and for us, you know, we got skin in the game with you. We, we get a percentage of it. So obviously we want it to sell as much as possible, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's, that's actually my favorite part of the thing. It's like, you guys have skin in the game. You, if we win, you win. And that's like a beautiful business model in terms of, especially when you're passive and you don't, you don't have any money. So we're all real estate people on here. So imagine like if your management company, if your property manager just did everything they could to maximize your profit every single month. Like they, they made sure that there was no maintenance that needed to be done and they handled everything and, and still collected the maximum amount of rent and made sure there weren't any leaks. Like yep. anybody who's been in real estate long enough knows that property managers and servicing companies, they, they don't necessarily do that. So <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not really worth it for them. It's a, a low income business, but for this, like Chris is, Chris's business is vested in, in your success and in the store doing well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, and not only that, my, my reputation as well, right? Like I'm, yeah. I'm proud of uh, the fact that, you know, as of now we're onboarding 40, 50 clients a month and we've only refunded one person ever in our whole existence in business. It wasn't even our fault. The guy had another Amazon account, Amazon flagged them, right? So I mean, shit like that happens, but I'm, I'm a reputation guy. You know, as you know, that's how I got referred to you, Ben was through Mark Evans, yeah. right? You know, you know, the DM, right? The GOAT. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I'm real big on, uh, do, you know, we win together, we lose together type thing. So anyways, yeah. um, this is a testimonial from a client that's not playing. So I think my, my media guy might have messed this up, but obviously we have tons and tons and tons of testimonials I can share with uh, anybody who wants to see them. 
as long as you know they're seriously interested, right? Um, what I'm gonna do now, guys, is rather than answering a million questions, I already have a bunch of them laid out and I'm gonna cover all of those. And then after that, if you still have questions, we'll go for, we'll do some questions. A uh, little bit on a time crunch because we started late and I literally have a, a mobile COVID tester coming here to test me. <laughs> I don't know if you missed the beginning of the call, my, my baby and my daughter both got COVID. My wife tested negative, but so now they're testing me. It's, it's been a nightmare. I'm like locked in my bedroom right now over here. <laughs> All right, so this is a, a probably one of the number one questions we get is, hey, Chris, if this is such a great business model, why don't you have a whole bunch of these stores, okay? Well, technically I do. I own a piece of all of the one of all of them. But the, the real reason is because Amazon will only let you have one store per household. So even a husband and wife couldn't have two stores if your guys' uh, mailing address is the same on your on your driver's license, right? Amazon's very strict about this. Why? I don't I'm not hundred percent sure, but if they catch you trying to have two stores, they will shut you down. Uh, it's a big thing for them. So in the beginning, when we started this company years ago, we exhausted the friends and family, you know, we called them friendlies, right? We had like aunts and uncles and friends and that type of thing. And we got maxed out eventually after seven or eight stores, all the capital required. So this business model is perfect because now we get a small percent of everything. You guys get the lion's share and we're leveraging your credit instead of ours. So as a team, we can do more together. Um, <laughs> this is another one, another one of my favorite questions. People ask me, all, isn't Amazon getting saturated? It's like, just to put in perspective, Amazon has a million employees. In 2019, they did 280 billion in revenue. Uh, I know you guys and girls on this call are all smart people, but have you ever like really like sat there and contemplated how much a billion dollars is? We, on one of the presentations we did, they put some comparisons and one of the comparisons that really like resonated with the crowd was, they said, if you were to count like this, one, two, three, four, you'd get to a billion in 36 years, 1 billion. Amazon did 280 billion in 2019. Uh, they smashed that in 2020. So yeah, your store doing hundred grand a month is not gonna saturate Amazon is the point. What's, what's Amazon's market share of that? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? Of the 3.5 trillion? Yeah. I, I don't, but I, they did over 300 billion last year. So just in that, you know, yeah. I mean, in uh, in twenty in twenty twenty, they had a hundred billion dollar quarter. Yeah, it's one of the businesses that actually boomed when COVID happened. It's crazy. So, here's another set of really good questions: Who owns the business? Okay, you as the investor, one hundred percent own the company. My company is strictly the management company. So it's kind of like your comparison, Ben. Like you own the rental property, I'm the management company. We're married together with a contract for two years. Uh, and that's basically how it works. But it's important for us to point out that you are the owner of the business. You have full access to everything. Now, granted, most of our clients are, uh, they don't want nothing to do with it. They just want to put the money up, link the credit card and get paid every month. However, you do have access to see everything. It is your company at the end of the day, which there's some, some benefits to that too, right? Because if you get this store producing uh, well, right, over the next couple of years, from the bank's perspective, this is just another seven figure business you own. They see money coming in every two weeks, high credit lines being paid all the time. Uh, it's something that you can leverage. I've had some of my um, like coaching students in my real estate program have stores with us. And some of these guys are younger guys and they've came to me and been like, hey, my Amazon LLC, I got a bigger credit card and a business line of credit. And now I'm using that on flips. So there's some side benefits to having another big business you own. Um, this is a great question too. Can I use multiple credit cards? Yes, you can. Uh, you can use as many as you want. However, if you just pick the one that has the best limit and focus on that one in, in a short amount of time, like within the first 12 months, that limit will go through the roof, assuming that you don't mess your credit up on your own, right? That's something that we can't control. But like Ben mentioned earlier, from the bank's perspective, they just see your card getting maxed and paid every two weeks. They just start cranking that limit up and up and up. Um, how do we view the activity? So as the owner, you have the Amazon seller app. You just download it to your phone. And from right there on your phone, you can see er literally everything. You can see what your store is selling, how much it's selling. You can have notifications on. So you get notified every time something gets sold or whatever. You'll, you'll be seeing everything. Is there a renewal fee? Yes, there is. So when you, uh, you, know, you set up with us, we get going. It's a two-year contract. At the end of two years, if you want us to continue running it, which 99% of our clients do, there's a $5,000 renewal fee. 
the reason we do this on a two-year contract is because there are some uh, do-it-yourselfers, right, that get in bed with us on this and eventually want to figure out how to run the back end on their own. That way they can you know, cut us out of it two years later and, and make more money, which is fine, right? It's your business. If you want to do that, you can. But I would say 99% of our clients are business people that don't want to mess with this. They're just looking at it strictly from an investment standpoint, and they just renew with us and let us do our thing. Um, this is my favorite question. Are there any risks? I was on stage talking to a thousand people in Dallas last week. You should have seen a look on their face when I said, guys, there's no risk. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Most investors don't understand that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm a real estate guy too, you know, yeah. so I, my, my, my red flag goes up too, but no. So obviously there's risk, right? I mean, you know, if, uh, if me and my whole team just, you know, went to Mars or something and never came back, you know, you guys would be burnt. Right. But other than that, the only thing that can happen is I'm going to focus, uh, emphasize temporary suspensions. Okay. So a lot of you guys may have heard some horror stories of people that have tried to do this and Amazon shuts them down and they never got their store back. That happens when you do everything wrong and you don't know what you're doing. Right. But for us, uh, we've never had it happen. We've never had not one client ever in history get permanently suspended ever. And we're onboarding an average of 40, 50 clients a month right now. So that speaks volumes about that. Now there are temporary uh, suspensions and audits and things like that. And I'll cover it kind of brief here, but the, the most common two are for one of two things, okay? So one's called the velocity review, which basically means we're growing too fast, right? And when that happens, they'll flag you, they'll put your store on pause, we put it on vacation mode. And then we have a legal team that basically sends them all the necessary paperwork that they need. At that point, the store gets reactivated. Um, fastest turnaround time I've ever seen is about three weeks, but sometimes it can take up to 60 days. When it happens, it sucks, but it's not the end of the world and you're not actually losing any money. Uh, it's very important. I want to point out right here that um, depending on what kind of credit card you link up to the account, for example, say you have a, a business American Express, okay? Um, some of our clients are grandfathered in. They've been a cardholder for a long time. And on those particular clients, they have the option to pay over time on the American Express if they need to. So I have one, mine's like that. But I have other clients that are newer clients and they don't have that option. So what can happen would be, say your card's racked up for $50,000 worth of sales and then all of a sudden we get flagged and we're on pause for a month or two, right? During that time, you would still have to pay your credit card because Amazon's gonna lock that money up until the audit's done. So if that would be a problem for you, then you want to make sure that you don't run this store with an Amex. You just want to put a visa or something to where you can make an uh, interest payment once or twice if need be. Yeah. And if that happened, that would be the only money lost would be, you know, a small interest payment on whatever your balance is while we get the store going again. Um, another reason they, they, they get audited is for an inauthenticity checkup, which basically means they just want to make sure that like, we're not like selling Chinese counterfeit stuff and, you know, robbing people essentially. When that happens, same thing. We send them a, a bunch of legal stuff and it gets knocked out. That one gets changed over very fast usually. Right now we're running a 4% suspension rate. So that means four out of every hundred stores are getting temporarily suspended. And we're, listen careful to this, okay? So 4% suspension rate and we're running a 100% reactivation rate. So that means we've never lost a store ever, okay? That's important. <laughs> yeah. A couple of things to unpack there. I mean, one, this is this is why you pay somebody like Chris's team to do it because they figured out all of the pitfalls, right? Like they know what not to do. And a lot of times that experience is worth a ton because if your store is up and running, that means it's profitable. But, you know, this is a real business. So this is not like you make seven grand a day or seven grand a month and it's the same number every month. It's going to have fluctuations in it. So you know, you have to have that expectation that Amazon might change something. They might, you know, change a particular algorithm or whatever that Chris and his team are, are going to figure out. Um, but, you know, that's that's the beauty of having somebody that has like this real world experience of managing hundreds of stores in your corner. That's that's really the value there. You know, the whole drop shipping business model in and of itself is a very gray area with Amazon. But the truth is, is they love it. They have over 3 million drop shippers and counting right now. And they're competing with Walmart now that Walmart's doing it too, right? So as long as you know what you're doing, they let you do it. <laughs> it's, 
they, what they what they here's what they don't want. They don't want uh, you know newbies out there building Amazon stores, selling products with their name, and then not handling returns right, not handling customer service right, and then people are mad at Amazon, right? So when you're doing it right, they let you do it, and you know we've been doing it right for a long time. That's why we have the success rate that we have. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Let me go here to the next slide. Uh oh, I think I got that lag again. Oh, you're good. Did it change? No, but there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's lagging on mine. I hit the button like 20 seconds ago. So here's the million dollar question. What does it cost and how do I get started? All right, here's the breakdown, guys. So to build out the store and set it up, which is basically the fee that we charge, think of it like a, a like if you're buying a franchise, right? This is the franchise fee. It's $35,000. That's what it costs. Don't DM me asking me for a discount. Don't call Dan, don't call Dan asking him for a discount. It is what it is, right? This is what it costs, yeah. not negotiable. Uh, however, we will do a discount on this webinar for action takers. We're gonna do that today and today only. Um, the rev share, same thing, 65, 35. Don't send me a message on Instagram going, yo, bro, I have great credit. Will you do it for the, I'm not gonna do it. This is what it costs, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> just wanna make that clear up front. Um, so what the rev share basically means is that 65% of the profit goes to you. So in essence, if your store had a $10,000 profit for the month, you would get 6,500, we get 3,500. The difference is your 6,500, you get to keep and go shop or do what you want. My 3,500 has to pay over hundred employees between here and overseas. And you know, that's kind of how we keep this thing going. We make a little, a little piece after all that. So that's why the numbers are fixed and they are what they are. Um, and then on the 6535, that's not counting the reward points on your credit card. That also obviously goes 100% to you. We don't get anything from that. So that's a, that's a benefit, especially if you have a store that's cranking a lot of volume. I mean, if you're doing, you know, 50,000 to 100,000 a month, that's 50 to 100,000 reward points a month. Like you're never paying for a flight ever again. <laughs> your, your wife's going to have unlimited Target gift cards. I, I had one of my clients, Ben was like, He's like, my wife's got more Target gift cards than I could shake a stick at. <laughs> this old guy told me that one time. I was oh, like, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's a benefit though, right? Um, yeah, do you, do you guys, this is an interesting question. I, and I've actually never asked you before because I just have the cards that I have. But do you guys have any insights on like the cards to use or, or different like rewards programs that are most beneficial? Yeah, so um, Top three that we see is the Platinum Business American Express. Uh, a lot of our business clients use that. I think simply because those cards can scale the fastest. They just go by your spending power and your net worth and they just let it go to the moon, right? Okay. Um, also, that's a good card to have points on for like flights and things like that. You know, like I travel a lot. I use my Amex for everything. Um, and so never have to pay for flights, which is really cool. Another one that a lot of our clients use is a, a it's called a Plum card, I yeah. think. Might be an Amex too. I'm not sure, but I just know yep. it's called a Plum Card. And then there's uh the Chase Inc. is a popular one. I think Chase Inc. gives you like literally like a, a percent and a half in cash back. So what I, what I recommend is like ask yourself this question. You know, do, do you want cash back in actual cash? Do you want free flights? Like, what is it that you want? And then find the card that offers the best points for that. Because like I have the Platinum uh, Amex business also. And it's basically like, you know, dollar for dollar on flight mileage. But if I use it on cash back, it's less. So I only yeah. use it for flights, right? So just find the card that works for you. And just keep in mind, though, if you do use that Amex and your store gets flagged, you, you're going to have a payment you have to make. So if, that, if you're one of the uh, clients on here that that's not a problem because you have the cash, you could just pay it off and wait, then you're fine. But if you're not in that situation, then you want to go with like a Chase Visa card or one of those. Yeah, I think the important lesson there is just like, in your business, like read the book profit first, if you haven't, but have that money set, have some money set aside in a reserve account, just in case shit hits the fan. Right. right. So, and you've got a, you've got a, you know, sort of dog paddle for a couple of months until Amazon gets it straightened out. Yeah. And it's, and it's not a bad idea. I mean, like some, a lot of our clients are younger guys too, and they just like simply don't have those kind of reserves. Like they, like I have a, off the top of my head, one of our clients is kid Bailey. He stands out because he's a uh, panda's brother's friend. Right. He's like 23. He saved the money, bought the store. He has good credit. His store is cranking like 40,000 a month now. Uh, and if it, if it got shut down, he don't have that kind of money. Right. Yeah. But he has his on a, a visa card. So if he needed to, he could pay three or 400 a month minimum payment until things get fixed around. So yeah. I only wish I would have found, had something like this at 23 years old. That's amazing. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> that kid Bailey, he uh, he literally makes like three grand a month at his job. His store is on track to passing up his actual income. Like he's he loves he's always shouting us out on Instagram. He loves us. Yeah, awesome. fantastic. 120 days probation. So this is important, okay? So guys, what this means is that from the day we start your store, what happens is you get some onboarding instructions. It's going to take you a week or so to do what you have to do. Uh, we guide you through it. You got to get an LLC and get some tax exempt papers and stuff like that. We, we pretty much hold your hand through it. But from the moment that that's done, there's a 120 day period of not much going on. I want to elaborate on this. Um, so during the first four months, we can't just like ramp right out of the gate. Um, Amazon simply won't let us for one. And two, we just have to have a certain amount of metrics that line up on the account before we have the green light to start scaling. I'm in the middle of a webinar. They're going to have to wait, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the, the people here to test me for COVID. <laughs> She's like, it's going to take two minutes. I was like, you guys want to watch me get my nose swabbed? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, 120 days probation, during that 120 days, basically we're gonna be listing items and we're gonna be selling little items. A lot of times you'll even see us doing things like we're selling items at a loss. It's because we're doing that to get good reviews and get the metrics lined up and win the buy box and do all these things we have to do to get the account ready to roll. So this is a critical period because this is the period where people start freaking out going, nothing's happening, you know? Or they start calling my guys going, hey, you're selling these screwdrivers at a loss and I see them on this website for this. And it's like, dude, just let us do our thing. We know yeah. what we're doing. We're doing it on purpose to win the buy box. Well, what's the buy box? It's like, you don't need to figure this out. Let us, let us do what we do. <laughs> All right. That's the hardest part, honestly, like even for me, like, cause you just like, you're so excited about it and you're watching it. And then it's like the Tom Petty song, the waiting is the hardest part. And you know, the watched pot will never boil. So the best thing that you can do, just, just giving you advice because I've, I've been going through this, is forget about it <laughs> just forget that it's there and check back in and after the 120 day period me and my team we have like little memes that we send to each other and like laugh where it's like you know new amazon client it's like what's going on nothing's happening da, 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 you know and then like past the four month mark it's like this is awesome and they're sending us screenshots like i did a thousand dollars today that's how it goes so the first uh 90 days there's no profit share with us because there's not really going to be any profit and if there is it's going to be very very minimal but we charge 500 bucks a month that money goes to us to just you know pay the team during that time we're building a master list we're doing a lot of product research and we're doing a lot of stuff for you it just seems like nothing's going on on your end um so we have financing available for this and i want to take a quick second to just bring this to your attention there's a lot of people uh, that do what we do with Amazon, but there's not a lot of people that have this. And the reason being is because, especially you guys being in real estate, you know how hard it is to get unsecured loans, right? I mean, yeah. these guys lend our clients money for a reason. It's because they've vetted our business. They've seen the success we've had over the years. Uh, they know that we don't, you know, we have no refunds. Like they know that we do this right. So they literally will finance you 100% of the 35,000 startup fee. We get people 100% approved all the time. So the basic guideline is 620 FICO score or greater, 40,000 per year income or more. Uh, it's gonna be five year terms, no prepayment penalties. Cheapest interest rate I've ever seen them give somebody was 6%, uh, which is pretty good, right? For a five year unsecured personal loan. For sure. Uh, and then highest I've seen it is 21%. So it, there's a lot of variables in there. They look at how long you've been making money, do you have anything derogatory on your credit, but you still have a good credit score? I've seen them reject people too. Uh, it's not common to get any like rejections. Usually they just counter and say, rather than giving you 35,000, we'll give you 25,000. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's there. Whether you need it or not, it's irrelevant, but I just wanted to point it out that they wouldn't even give it to us <laughs> if we weren't doing this right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's, yeah. I think that's an important note to mention. So let me click out of here. I don't know why I have such a lag on my Chris, computer. do they hold a lien or anything like that or a, a position on the LLC for that person at all to, to secure it or it's just completely unsecured? It's completely unsecured. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, right? Real estate people don't understand that. They're like, wait a minute, I, I'm in first position, you know, deed of trust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me tell you how good we are, okay? Like this, this, <laughs> this speaks volume of us too. Not only is it unsecured, you know, from you guys, but it's non-recourse to my company. So if the That's client great. burns them, they don't come back after me either because they know yeah. we did everything right. So 
before you text this number, I'm going to give you guys a deal, okay? But get ready because <laughs> we don't ever do discounts. And when we do, it's only on webinars like this just for the action takers. Like, obviously, um, there's on this call, we have 30 people still that are here interested. I know if you guys are here with Ben and you're investors and some of you guys are ready to take action. I always tell people, we have two types of clients on these webinars, okay? And I love them both, right? We have the, the drivers, like I'm a driver, like let's go, I'm ready, you know, that's great. If you're a driver, you're gonna get a discount, okay? Then we have the, gotta talk to my wife, gotta talk to my CPA, gotta talk to God tonight, <laughs> gotta talk to everybody, and that's okay. I love the analytical guys too. But if you text that number, I'm ready, and you're actually ready, here's what's gonna happen. My guys will respond with getting your email, we'll get you over a two-year contract and wire instructions, and if you do it today, uh, well, if you ink it up today, you can wire tomorrow. But if we get it done today, we're going to give you guys a thousand dollar discount just for being here on the call with Ben. And that's a thousand real dollars, you know, take your wife that's out, awesome. celebrate uh, your new investment on us. Okay. But this is for action takers. Okay. So if you're not that ready, but you're kind of ready, you can text that same number also, but just be specific and say, Hey, interested in getting going on the Amazon store, but I still have some questions. And what my guys will do is they'll respond. They will set up a call. Um, I want to make this clear too. Like this number, this isn't like, you know, a call rail number we made up. This is like my guy's actual cell phone. Like we're doing this for Ben because, you know, we a small group here today. We want to make sure that you guys get the immediate attention you need. And they've pretty much cleared out our day to deal with anybody who wants to schedule calls. But just be sure that if you're ready, you put I'm ready and you're actually ready because we don't want to take away from someone who might be ready. Because what happens is, someone's ready, but then they get on the call and they want to ask 15,000 more questions, right? And then it just delays us from getting to the people that are actually ready to move forward. So if you're ready, you're an action taker. If you believe in this, you believe in Ben, text that number. I'm ready. We're going to save you a thousand dollars. That's only valid. If you do it today, we get an inked up contract today. You can wire tomorrow or whatever. That's fine. If you're going to do financing, same thing, we can get you submitted to the lender. Um, we can't even submit you to the lender until you have a contract with us. They won't even look at it until then. So that's how that works. Other than that, um, what I can do, Ben, is stay on for like five more minutes or whatever. And just yeah, I got I got some questions here. We'll do just rapid fire. So uh, John asked, what about the investor that has excess cash of, let's say, 500K that can be leveraged instead of a credit card? Could they just tie that to a, like a debit card? Yeah, you can. But then you're going to you're going to miss out on all the reward points. And it's a lot of money. Yeah. Especially if you have that kind of capital, like you're always better using a credit card because those reward points add up. I mean, look at that client I showed you that was doing, you know, that did 5 million. That guy got 5 million reward points. Yeah. That's, a lot. <laughs> That's like another $50,000 in income or however much, you know, to the bottom. For sure. Of yeah. So, but let's say for instance, say like their biggest credit card was like 25 K they could basically use that first until it's exhausted and then go to the debit card. So it's building it up over time. So does that sound right? Yep. All right, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I really want to stay on to answer questions for a little bit. So I'm going to just get my nose swabbed. And Go ahead. I, I got a couple here I can answer on my own. So have them come in, babe. I'm still alive. Okay. It's going to be really fast, right? Yeah. I'm okay. So John also asked thoughts of using IRA money with self directed. Um, John is asking about self directed IRAs. We have a lot of node investors. So self directed. So buy, the, buy the floor? Yeah. Yeah. To, I mean, to yeah. run money in and out on a, on a monthly basis. Oh, I mean, same, same thing. You're still going to be sacrificing the reward points. We you have do, to but you don't sacrifice the tax advantages that come with it. And it's so, true. yeah. So, uh, John, that's an interesting question. And actually, we should probably have a conversation with Aaron about that if, if you're interested in doing it, because um, he, he did, while we're here, he actually just texted me and said that he actually figured that piece out. So, Aaron with Directed IRA, my partner in Noteworthy. So um, might be worth a conversation to see if, if something like that would work. Oh, you guys just missed it. I had this thing like in my I brain practically. I know, I should have. Yeah. Oh. Like, wait, I okay. make okay. Thank you. Man, technology is crazy. Oh. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I haven't had that done yet, so I don't envy you. Um, hey, Chris, how, how many stores do you actively manage? Uh, right now, over 300. And we, well... In our direct ownership, over 300, but we also do some consulting for some of our competitors, right? So if you want to count that, it's closer to 600. And as of right now, we're onboarding 40, 50 people a month. So we're growing very fast. But yeah, that's the short answer to that. Awesome. 
uh, some of you missed the beginning. Yes, uh, we, we do have it recorded and we're going to send to you afterwards so you can check up on the spots that you missed. Um, let's see. Uh, I, another IRA question. Yes, Mary, um, if you want, you can get with my partner, Aaron Halderman, on that. We'll be glad to email you after the fact. I want to touch uh, on something real quick on because the IRA thing yeah. reminds me of something. And I'm not a tax professional, guys, but I have had lots of clients say that in regards to paying the 35000 that they're able to write that off because technically they're paying that to my company as a management consulting type thing. Sure. Um, for what it's worth, you can, if your CPA is crafty, you can write off the initial investment also, which is cool. Nice. Yep. Um, okay. So uh, it says, speaking of COVID, what happens if heaven forbid something happens to you? Yeah. If something happens to me, you guys will be fine. Cause truth is I don't really do anything except have webinars at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you know, right now in the States, we have about 12 employees here in California. And then if you count the people we have overseas, we have over a hundred employees total. Um, you guys are all familiar with VAs, right? So we have a, a ton of VAs overseas in Bangladesh that do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. But yeah, no, if something happens to me, you'll be fine. The only way you guys would not be fine would be if something happened to all of us. Right. And, I yeah. think that's going to happen. I'm going to bring my partner, Aaron, on here. He was going to chime in, I think, on the um, the self-directed stuff. Okay. Aaron, are you, you yeah, on? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, cool. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, basically, I mean, we can have – it's a it's a bit longer of a conversation, so I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to, like, go over the full details of it, especially on the recording. <laughs> Uh, for tax and legal purposes, but uh, there is a way to be able to to do that um, that would not result in a prohibited transaction. See, the issue with the self-directed IRA, right, is you can't, you know, in, uh, invest alongside like you as an individual or your spouse in a household. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of like the strategy or, or things that, um, we could go over, but if you want to just drop an email uh, over to me, just Aaron, A-A-R-O-N at notetools.com and Ben will send some follow-up, then I'll have a conversation with you over the phone and kind of walk you through the logistics of how that would work, how it'd be set up, how you could do it, et cetera. So that's pretty much it. But I, I, I do know of a strategy, a couple different strategies to, to use, and I'd be happy to to, to help you go through that. But again, you know, it's not going to be, you know, you or your spouse as a household and your IRA involved, that obviously be your disqualified party, you know, you and your spouse are to your IRA. So that'd be a, a PT. Uh, but I have other ways of doing it that wouldn't yeah. result in a prohibited transaction. That's it. Awesome. That could, that could be pretty awesome guys. I mean, yeah, Chris makes the point of you, you miss out on like the points, but if you have a, a, a nice Roth IRA account and this was just cranking money into it tax-free, like, um, oh my God, that's, that's exciting. That's so, awesome. That's super exciting. Yeah. The guy's texting me as we speak. He's like, people are texting. So congratulations to those of you who are already texting. That's awesome. Oh, awesome. Great. Um, you guys. I got, uh, I got time now. They already swabbed my nose. So I can stay Okay. <laughs> if you got more questions, put them up. Yeah, There's yeah. some sharp people on here, like Mary. She's an attorney. Like you know, she knows a lot about IRAs and stuff. Yeah. Too, so. Hey, Mary yeah. asked Chris. Uh, she kind of missed the background in, in the beginning. Can you can you just give a quick repeat of your your background on, on this business? Yeah. Uh, so just give you the elevator pitch on me. But I'm 36, married, two kids, got a baby and a 20 year old. You missed that part. <laughs> Permanent babysitter at the house. But no, my background's in telemarketing. So. Um, I started a telemarketing company when I was like 20 years old uh, and I grew that company to around four or five million dollars and I was I had a parent company that was basically fulfilling all my orders and I basically became their biggest distributor and at that point they bought me out and we ended up merging and together we took that company for 20 million dollars so my background starts with that you know I'm an I'm a old school brick and mortar business guy in my heyday I had over 250 employees so that's, that's where I got my chops at. But to, if you flash forward till now, um, I'm a real estate guy as well. I'm president of Same Day Home Sale in California. Right now we flip like 60, 70 houses a year between wholesale and fix and flip. Um, I own rental properties in three states. So I do that too. And then I also own a social media agency where basically we help grow people's Instagrams, 
we help people get press. Uh, if you want to be featured on Forbes and things like that, we, we set that type of stuff up. And then Econ Partners. This I'm actually co-owner of this company. Um, ben knows my partner, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Rios, he's my 50-50 partner in this company. And this company, we've been doing this since 2016. Uh, this is a new name. Econ Partners, the actual brand's only been around for about six months. We were doing it under another uh, name since 2016. But yeah, that's where we're at today. Um, this, this month, we've onboarded over 50 stores. So we're doing over 2 million a month just, just from that alone. I mean, we know what we're doing with um, for sure. This is my biggest business now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So look, guys, I mean, um, this is just another income stream, right? So this is uh, never going to suggest, because we're real estate guys, we're not going to suggest you replace real estate with this. Like you should keep doing what you're doing. Diversification is key, right? So and I'm not, Chris does a ton of deals like he just told you. I do a ton of deals. I'm not going to stop doing those. But, um, you know, if you've got rental properties and the government steps in and says, hey, you can't evict somebody because of COVID or you can't foreclose on somebody because of COVID, they don't have to pay. And guess what? Your, your Amazon business can still be cranking. So, you know, because people are still shopping, people are still buying stuff, you know, uh, you know, God forbid we have another run on toilet paper, you know, they're going <laughs> to go to Amazon to buy it. So, you know, that's a, that's a big deal. I always, I always tell people, Ben, like, you know, we're always talking about like the big stores that are doing a hundred thousand a month. Right. But like, even for a normal, just regular client, if you have a, a $20,000 limit on your credit card, we can literally make you 1400 to $2,000 a month. Okay. Like if all it did was pay your mortgage every month, I mean, would it be worth it? Like, would you go buy a $35,000 rental property that would pay you 1400 a month net? Of course you would. It's a no brainer. Yes. Uh, if you missed the earlier part of the call, I was mentioning to Ben, I'm going to Ohio next week. We're going to be buying 84 units out there and it's going to net cash flow like 17,000 a month, 16,000 a month after all the debt service, like, and it's a $6 million building, right? It's like, <laughs> you, just, you can't do that you know, in real estate, right. But this is just different. So yeah. like if all it did was make you a couple grand a month that you could save for your kids, like, would it be worth it? You know, if all it did was make that new lease payment on some car you want, like, would it be worth it? You know, of course it would. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll do one last call for questions. If you got something, go ahead and throw it in there. If not, we'll let Chris go. He's got a busy, busy day. Um, stuck in his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, Ben, ben Miller asks, what's your typical ROI? So I hate this question because it's, it varies, right? It depends on the client. You know, the clients that have higher credit lines, we can list items that have bigger margins. So you, usually the more expensive the item, the more of a margin that's on there, right? So if your store is selling coffee cups all day, we might only be making a dollar on every cup. But if we're selling, you know, refrigerators, we might be making three or 400 bucks. But if you have... A small credit line, we can't list a whole bunch of refrigerators. So it's very tricky, but it's safe to say that your store is going to make seven to 10% per month of the monthly sales. Okay. And the monthly sales are going to be 100% controlled by how much credit you have available. So if you have $20,000 as a credit limit, we can make you $1,400 to $2,000 a month. Now, these numbers. They, they vary on a month to month, but this is annualized, right? So like, it's not uncommon for you to have, say a month where, say for example, you do $50,000 and the profit margin comes in at only 4%. That might happen. But then the next month you might do 50,000 and it might come in at 18%. After we annualize it on, on the year, we're seeing seven to 10% net per month. Is that is that after the profit split with you guys? Yeah, that's net net. Okay. So, I mean, I'd rather under promise and over deliver. I mean, just plan on 7%. I mean, look at it that way, right? Yeah. And it's a lot. If you're, you know, even if you're doing 20, 30,000 a month in sales, that's a lot of money every month. And also too, that's plus the reward points. So the 7% and then whatever your cash back from your cards, that's all extra. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, guys. Like I, I'm past the 90 day mark now on uh, a store and like the first couple, pro like we were selling products like food coloring, you know, like it was just like weird little things, little tchotchkes. And then, uh, you know, now I have like a, there's a couch listed, you know, so it is just, it, it, Chris is right. I mean, you're, you're going to have a better product. You're going to get a better spread. And that's why the, the bigger credit limit is, is a really nice feature to have. Yeah. Um, all right. Hey, hey Ben, my yeah. guy, my guy just texted me. He goes, yo, he's like, 
because he has the link too. He's like, you guys messed up. He's like, the webinar said 2.30 Eastern. You guys started at 2. Oh, no. <laughs> well, here's the good news, guys. We recorded it, all right? So anything that you think is like incredibly important that you might have missed, it's going to be coming to your email like shortly after we're done. So like I said, I'm not in a hurry. I'm still here. So yeah. We, yeah, if you guys have more questions, if I need to scroll back, we can. How can we take a look at your store? I could show it to you. So I, I'm transparent. So I'm still in the growth phase. So there's not really much to look at, but you can get an understanding of like what they've done if you want to see that. Yeah, um, you know, the, the, store, the stores are very predictable, guys. It's like, a, yeah. try to take your real estate hat off for a minute if you can. And just, it's like, I tell people, if we go build you a Starbucks, it doesn't matter where we put it. It's going to sell coffee, right? If we went and started a McDonald's, it doesn't matter if there's another McDonald's a mile away. They're both going to sell chicken nuggets all day long because the market is there for it. And with yeah. Amazon, it's the same thing. It's the biggest company in the world, Amazon and Walmart, right? So it's like, it's, the, the market is there. It's going to sell. There is no like, what if my store doesn't sell? It's like, no, it's going to sell for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of how well do we do managing it to get the profit margins we're desiring. That, that's what it comes down to. Right. So um, I don't know much about this because I, I really only go to two places on this store. So, but this is, this gives you an idea of how my store is set up right now, but you can kind of see like, again, see, I was talking about food coloring. So they, they've sold like I think three or four of those this week. Um, but there's other stuff on here, you know, like a spray gun and bathtub. And I mean, it's very diversified. So these guys are researching these products and saying, oh, these things are selling, you know? So, you know, these are my particular active products. So you can see right now, it's not a whole lot. Some of the stuff is, is out of stock, but this is all stuff that's currently active. And so they'll continue to build upon that. Uh, you know, for the next, uh, I'm, I'll be at the 120 day mark here by the end of April. And then, you know, it'll begin to really start to scale up from there. So you're still in probation. And so like, if, if you missed that part, anybody who was late to that part, it's like in the beginning, we just list certain items that sell easy. Um, sometimes we even list them at a loss just so they sell fast and we get yeah. up good reviews and we win the buy box and we, the account has to have certain metrics in order before we can really start stepping on the gas. So for the first four months, this is kind of what you're going to see. And what, what Ben's looking at is the dashboard in the background, like, but most clients just have an app on their phone. So if you just yeah. go like an Amazon seller app and uh, you know, it's just like literally on your iPhone, you can just click it. And it, instead of being complicated like that, it just shows like sales and how much came in and what's selling is very simple. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean that, that again, the waiting is the hardest part. The first, those first like four months are going to be like, if you're over overly anxious, you know, it can be tough to look at and you're like, Oh my God, what's happening. I, these guys got me, but no, it, it's, it's going to happen. And, and I wouldn't have Chris on like, if we knew it wasn't legit, like I, hopefully you guys know me well enough now that we don't bring fluff to you. So if it's like a, a winning formula, we're going to present it to you. And ultimately it's your choice, whether or not you think it's a fit for you. So there's no hard sales pitch. You want to do it. Great. If you don't don't doesn't really matter. So very well said. Yeah. I mean, our, our company has exploded to the size it is strictly 100% from repeat and referral business and, you know, uh, reputation and, you know, people hooking us up with their friends and just like how we met, we met through Mark Evans. He's a yeah. big way real estate guy. And it's like that relationship opens up another relationship, opens up another relationship and it just keeps, keeps on growing. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. Mary says, uh, do I understand correctly that I could be totally passive in this and Chris's company would handle all aspects of the store? Yes. Absolutely. That's the only real client. That's what we want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The only work you're going to have is right at the beginning, Mary. And his team is fantastic. Like they walked me right through exactly what to do, you know, how to set everything up and, you know, get everything entered. So, you know, they're very on point. I can, I can elaborate on that too, just a little bit. Sure. We, didn't talk, we didn't talk about this, but so during the onboarding, yeah, you'll get an email of what you need to do. And then you'll have a customer care person on my team that will walk you through it. It's very simple. You're just going to get an LLC, file some basic paperwork. Uh, but after that, you'll download the seller app. Then you'll have about four months of not much going on. Um, there's that 500 a month charge for the first three months. There's no revenue share during that time. But fast forward past that, once the store is going, so what will happen is this your card will be getting ran for sales all the time. And then every two weeks, you'll be getting a direct deposit from Amazon. So it's important to note that the money goes to you. It doesn't go to us. Okay. So all you'll have to do is every two weeks, when you get that money from Amazon, 
you'll have to pay your credit card off, remove your profit. And then at the end of the month, you get a, a, a spreadsheet from us. It's like a Google doc that we share with you. And that spreadsheet, it's huge, right? It's gonna show every single item that was sold, uh, what the profit margin was per item. At the end, it's tallied up and it says, hey, you did 50,000. This was the margin. This was your total profit. This is what you owe us. And at that point, uh, you could send us a wire or we could ACH debit your account or however you want to pay. We don't really care. And you just pay us the revenue share. Uh, and I think it's important to bring that up that you guys are actually the ones in control. The money goes to you. Like we're chasing you down to get paid <laughs> basically. <laughs> so that, that's how that works. Uh, so to answer Mary's question specifically, the only thing you're going to have to do every month is pay off your credit card and pay us. That's it. And that's something that we can't control also. Right. So like this happens too sometimes Ben is like, a client will get, uh, you know, his card will get maxed and Amazon pays the money and then they don't pay their card off. Yeah. So now, like, this is, it's important because what happens is more orders are being sold and now they're bouncing, right? So we have to like hurry up and put the store on vacation mode until they take care of their stuff. So it is a partnership still. You do have to make sure that you're on top of that credit card and it's paid at all times. That way there's no hiccups because all it takes is for a hiccup like that to happen and three or four people to get pissed and start writing bad reviews. And now we have some, some trouble, right? So other than that, nothing to do. Interesting question here. Um, how do people hear about and get to your store? Like, are you able to share your store with people that you know, or is it just a, a blanket general Amazon? It show, your, your product shows up on the Amazon platform. Yeah, it's just like that. I mean, you'll have the app on your phone, you know, and you can like go on there and look at, show people whatever you want to show them, right? Because on the app, it shows what you're selling and all that type of stuff. But that's it. Yeah, this isn't one of those things like you're not going to like push your store and get more sales to it. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a process. You know, we list the right items on the right day to get the numbers we need. And so that's another question people ask too is like, hey, do I have any say so? about what my store is selling and the answer is no, like we sell what is selling, <laughs> right? So it might be dog food one day, it might be appliances the next day, gym equipment, whatever it is, it's just, that's what we do. Yeah, I mean, think of back, like I'm dating myself, but if you think back to like the eighties, you know, when Cabbage Patch kids were like the hot thing, like they're gonna, tr they're gonna try to sell those at that particular point, right? If it's, if it makes sense. If, you know, Nintendo Switch becomes the next hot thing, then they'll, they'll pivot to that. So that's the beauty of it. Their team is doing all of that. Yep. So um, I get confused by reference to percentage of revenue versus percentage of profit. Not sure what, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Like what, what your thought is there? Reference to percentage of revenue versus, okay, so. You know, obviously the, the sales is the monthly revenue, right? So if your store sells $100,000, that's the revenue. Your profit's gonna be somewhere between seven and 10% of that revenue per month, not per year. So to, to put it very simply, if you sold $100,000 in January, your profit's gonna be seven to $10,000 for that month, give or take, you know? That's in gross sales of product, right? Yep. Yep. Gross. All right. Um, like, yeah. I think we went back and talked about the credit limits already. So you should put the other screen back up, Ben, with the text numbers. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it gets a little complicated because Amazon takes a piece too. But what we do is we just share with you guys the numbers that matter to you. And the simplest yeah. way to explain it is you're going to make seven to 10%. You know, Amazon takes 15% of everything also, but it's kind of like you don't even see it. Right. So yeah, you need to do it from your end, Chris. I don't have that slide. Oh, uh, how do we get out of here? Just go down to the green button on the share screen. And it should, if you still got it up. Um, and you share, we share a percentage of profit, not revenue, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The revenue comes in. So it's like this, your card gets ran for hundred grand. Amazon's going to pay you back. You're going to pay off your credit card, whatever the profit that's left. We take 35%, you keep 65%. Yeah. And we share a spreadsheet with you that helps you do it. I don't even know how I got out of here, Glenn. Okay. <laughs> Right, let me tell you guys a fun fact about me. I'm not a computer guy at all. Uh, normally I have my tech guy here with me doing all this for me while I just talk. <laughs> He's not here. This is probably my millionth Zoom and I still don't know how to use it. But That's a great example of the who to do the how. You've, you've yeah, already mastered that piece. Uh, that, yeah, that's my specialty is delegating for sure. Yeah. Um, maybe you could just put it in that chat box, Ben. I don't know. I mean, my daughter's email. But that's the other thing too. I'm on my daughter's computer because I'm locked in this room over here because we got COVID, so... <laughs> 
Uh, let's see, where's your, I'm looking on your screen to see if I see it down on the bottom. I don't even know. Is it behind is. there? Oh. Oh, there's her and her boyfriend in the background. You guys don't want to see No. That. You might've closed, you I might've might've closed, closed it out maybe. I don't know yeah. how. But either way, guys, if, I yeah. mean, if you want to take advantage, we could just put it in that chat box. If you want to just type it in there, Ben, and the number. Because all you got to do, if you if you act today, we're going to discount you a thousand bucks. That's a thousand real dollars. Let me tell you guys something, okay? I've done a lot of these webinars. And every time there's four or five people right away, they go, yep, ready, boom, they save a thousand bucks. And then for the next two weeks, everybody else ends up buying stores and they come back and go, can I get the thousand dollar discount from the webinar? <laughs> you guys are commission based. And they say, no. <laughs> yeah. and then we have people dming ben and messaging me like hey how come i can't get the discounts like because we have people to pay so if you want that discount don't be scared text today and we'll get yeah. you taken care of do you know I, I don't have the number written down chris do you know it like i said if you text i'm ready to that number he's gonna ask you for your email he's gonna send you over the agreement uh after that sign we'll send you wire instructions obviously i uh, probably don't have time to do it today maybe you do maybe you don't but if you take care of it tomorrow you'll save a thousand dollars and that's a thousand real dollars if you still have questions or you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one call, you can text Ryan also, but it won't be today because we're going to be busy helping the people that are actually buying. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I think we got to them all. So, hey, Chris, you guys are amazing at what you do. So I appreciate your time and even, you know, battling a, a COVID family over there and, you know, still making it happen. So I appreciate you jumping on and explaining this. And most importantly, I appreciate you setting up our people. Like, again, this is like our tribe, right? So, and we, we love and care about these people. We want to protect them. And I don't just bring them anyone, you know? So uh, that's why we carefully vetted it, looked at it. And I knew if the DM was on board, it was legit. So that was the main thing. You know, so, did you know this is how I actually met Mark? Is it really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember you telling me. Yeah. He, he called you and was like, Hey, I, I think we need to talk. Yeah. So, well, someone, yeah. uh, on Instagram sent me a message saying that uh, Mark was asking around like, who's the number one Amazon guy? And they yeah. people sent him my info. And I never, you know, it's funny I'm a real estate guy and I never even heard of Mark because I'm over here in California. <laughs> you know? yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, but me and my friends always laugh because like, you know, I have 700,000 followers on Instagram. I'm a quote unquote influencer, but I always yeah. say Mark's the biggest influencer I've ever met. Like that guy's got real influence. Like everybody that talks to me is like, oh, Mark's doing it. I'm doing it. You know, it's just, yeah. It's amazing, you know. I got the, I was uh, got lucky enough to spend the day with him the other day because uh, we went out to Florida to um, take my marketing team to dinner because they're out there in Florida and Mark just happened to be in Florida. So I said, "Dude, let me take you on a boat for a day." So Pan and I we paid like twelve grand, took him on a yacht for the day, and I just sat there like a sponge, just picking yeah. up brain. You know, impressive guy. Yeah, he's the best. So, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, this is this is our reputation, and that's why I chose to work with you on the whole thing because. I knew it's somebody that was going to take care of our people. So I appreciate you. And thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. Um, you, you know, great questions. Uh, if you have follow-up questions, obviously, you can, you can text them. Again, the number is 951-529-9770. You can either say you're ready or you got follow-up questions, and they'll reach out to you and, and be sure to go through those with you. So thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Yep, everybody have a good day. Thanks. All for right, best to your family over there. Hope everybody stays as healthy as possible. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Right, Take care.